This video is sponsored by Aura. More from them in a bit. On July 19th, 2024, the world came to a halt. Y2K was happening 24 years late. Planes were grounded, banks rendered inoperable. The Marriott hotel chain left in ruins. The modern world destroyed, all while Microsoft's blue screen of death was popping up in airport terminals. And everybody wondered who was to blame for this. Could it be Microsoft? Well, no, actually, it wasn't Microsoft. It was something completely different, but most people just kind of assumed it was Microsoft. And they were happy to assume it was Microsoft because a lot of people just don't like Microsoft. A lot of people don't like Windows, yet we all still seem to use it. Windows is by far the most popular operating system on personal computers by no small margin. And it's been that way for a long time. So why is this? Well, it's pretty simple, honestly. Windows is popular because Windows is popular. Developers making applications won't make a special version for every single operating system. They will target the most popular ones first. And as Windows became more popular, more developers considered a Windows release more and more imperative. And at this point, you're hard pressed to find any application that doesn't have a Windows version natively with just a few exceptions. Businesses use Windows and Microsoft Office so frequently because every other business uses Windows and Microsoft Office so frequently. Everything's just compatible. And so, while there are alternatives, for the most part, we're all just kind of stuck using Windows. Which wouldn't be the worst thing in the world, honestly, if Windows was good. Or was it getting actively worse every single year? Yeah, it wasn't just the greatest IT disaster in history that got me thinking about how concerning it is that we're all relying on one operating system. Really, ever since the release of Windows 11, I think a lot of people have been kind of concerned about where Microsoft is taking their operating system. So today I just kind of want to, I don't know, I'm going to rant about that. I hate scammers. I hate spammers. And unfortunately, as time goes on, it's becoming more and more clear that massive corporations and big tech aren't up to the task of keeping us safe. Recently, AT&T revealed that nearly all their customers' call and text records had been exposed in a massive data breach. And it hasn't even been a few months since they admitted over 70 million of their users' social security numbers ended up on the dark web. The stolen logs also contain a record of every number AT&T customers called or texted. So even if you don't use AT&T, if somebody who texted you did have AT&T, then your number has been exposed. But luckily, there is a way to fix this. Aura, the sponsor of today's video. Aura will alert you if they find out that your phone number or any other sensitive information has been compromised. Get fast fraud alerts if anyone tries to use that data to access credit or bank accounts. From transaction monitoring, a VPN antivirus, a password manager, parental controls, and identity theft insurance, Aura is pretty essential in the modern day to keeping you safe. So stop leaving yourself vulnerable to data breaches. Protect yourself in the digital age by going to aura.com slash knowledge husk and try your first two weeks for free. Link is in the description. Complaining about Windows is nothing new. Windows has always had its good updates and its bad updates. And there's usually a reason for the bad updates. Windows 8, for example, that <laughs> was that was a bad update. See, Microsoft believed that traditional desktop computers were on the way out and tablets would replace them. So Windows got this huge overhaul to accommodate for touch screens. But then most people just didn't bother using the tablets. So this whole user interface was just extremely odd and out of place and unintuitive for the majority of users who just continued using a mouse and keyboard. But people tend to agree that uh, Windows 7 and Windows 10 were examples of pretty good Windows updates, right? 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 Can, can we agree on that? A Windows 11 is horrendous. Disgusting. Okay, so maybe that's a bit of an overreaction. It's generally a usable and functional operating system, but ever since it's been revealed, it's been the subject of many controversies. Controversies that started way before it was even announced. See, back in 2015, this Microsoft employee, Jerry Nixon, was trying to get people excited to develop for the new Microsoft Store. And in the process of hyping people up, he said that Windows 10 
was going to be the last Windows. And after this point, Windows would just become more like a service with continuous updates. Now, of course, this news spread pretty fast. It's big news to assume that Windows is getting a final update, and people were pretty happy with this. And I would argue that this statement actually contributed quite a lot to Windows 10's success. Now, years later, a lot of people say that this quote was taken out of context or wasn't actually from Microsoft. But here's the thing. This was a quote from a Microsoft employee during a Microsoft event. The company themselves never denied it, and it was simply taken as a fact. So then, years later, people were confused. And if that wasn't bad enough, it turned out that Windows 11 was going to have a lot more strict requirements than Windows 10 did. One in particular required the use of a TPM2 security chip that older computers might not have. This also meant that people who didn't buy pre-built PCs and instead built their own were going to have a bit of trouble trying to get Windows 11. It's not a huge deal, but like for me, I had to go into the BIOS and do some wacky stuff to get the TPM chip recognized or something, but even that didn't work. So I had to go in and update the thing that updates the thing that tells Windows it can update itself. Not exactly the most user-friendly experience. And after all of that, me and others were simply greeted with a worse version of Windows. A downgrade. So why is it so bad? Honestly, Windows 11 is awful because it has too much Microsoft in it. Every tech company is obsessed with getting people into their ecosystems. Like Apple wants you to use an iCloud account to store your pictures in the iCloud, to buy applications on the App Store, all to keep you invested in Apple. And it works. Google might have its own hardware, but it really does try to keep you invested in its services. Gmail, Google Docs, Google Slides, Google Drive, YouTube, YouTube TV, Google Play Store, so on and so forth. And honestly, I can see why some people would pick one or the other. While I think it's a little dystopian to devote yourself wholeheartedly to big tech conglomerates, it is undeniably convenient to have all of your information stored under one tech company's umbrella. For years, Microsoft has been trying to get in on this action, and they have failed. Part of it is because their products often fail. I mean, remember Groove Music? Cortana, the Windows Phone, the Zune, the Surface RT, Microsoft Band. Remember that one time they tried to make a Twitch competitor, Mixer? How'd that go again? Even the stuff they have that's still around is, <laughs> it's a downgrade compared to everything else. Why use Outlook when you can use Gmail? Why use OneDrive when Dropbox or Google Drive exists? Sure, a lot of businesses use Microsoft Office, but for the average person, there's a lot of cheaper alternatives. For a lot of people, Internet Explorer was never anything more than a way to download a better web browser. But in recent years, Microsoft has decided that this isn't good enough. They want everybody everywhere to actually use their Microsoft products. And Windows 11 is just one big ad for all of this garbage. Okay, so say you want to install Google Chrome. You boot up your Windows 11 machine, you go to Microsoft's Edge browser, and you type in the words Chrome. Uh-oh, you've made a horrible mistake. Microsoft will now do everything in their power to try and get you to not download Chrome. There was a while back when if you asked their, uh, their Microsoft AI about Chrome, it would simply tell you how great Bing is and why you should use Bing. If you search for Chrome in Edge, you're gonna get a bunch of warnings that look like they're malware pop-ups trying to tell you that Edge is by far the superior option and you are making the worst decision of your life by trying to download Chrome. Some of you out there might be wondering, well, why don't you just use Edge instead? It's built off of Chromium, so it's kind of like Google Chrome, right? The entire browser is just like Windows 11, nothing but an ad for Microsoft services that consistently, insistently insist that you use them. Edge is just the tip of the iceberg, though. If you don't know what to do when you start up Windows, the exact settings to pick, you will be constantly berated with ads for Microsoft garbage, or even non-Microsoft garbage. Yes, Microsoft has actually started putting ads in its own operating system. The audacity on display here, the absolute lack of shame. Yeah, you can turn it off, but you have to know how to turn it off, and Microsoft doesn't really let you know how to turn it off. 
Microsoft also wants every user to be connected to a Microsoft account, connected to the Microsoft servers. There's a way around this, but again, not very easy. When I booted up my PC recently, I was greeted with this warning that said I needed to link my PC to a Microsoft account. And there was no way to say no. It just said either accept this or remind me in three days. Of course, if you go into the settings and do this, this, and this, that won't pop up. But again, it shouldn't have popped up in the first place. Microsoft's just trying to get people to use their accounts to store their data in the cloud, the OneDrive, all with the hopes that you'll fill that up and then you'll have to pay them every single month to keep your data in there. They want people to use their Copilot AI, which has now been integrated into every corner of Windows, whether you like it or not. Look, I don't want this. I don't need this. Go away. <laughs> Some of you might remember that briefly, Microsoft announced a feature called Recall, which would take a screenshot of your computer every few seconds and use AI to allow you to go back in time. Of course, a lot of people had some concerns about this, like, is it going to take pictures of my credit card information? And it wasn't until safety experts denounced this as an extreme privacy issue that Microsoft finally backed down. Okay, so right now I get a lot of these complaints about Windows aren't that big of a deal. I mean, it's annoying. Ads in my start menu, that's annoying, I get it. But like, it could be a lot worse and it, it could get a lot worse. And that's what I'm scared of. What if in 10 years, people look back on Windows 11 as the good old days? Rumors in the past have suggested that a future version of Windows could be a subscription service where rather than the user owning the operating system in any way, you would have to pay a monthly or annual fee to access it. That is very scary stuff, but luckily this rumor was based on a misunderstanding of some code that was found within Windows 11 that had nothing to do with any of this. That's good. That is good news. But. Then it was revealed that this actually sounds like it was Microsoft's plan the whole time anyway. <laughs> and that's bad news. During the FTC versus Microsoft case, internal documents showed that Microsoft did have plans and does have plans to slowly force users to move more and more into the cloud. At some point, this operating system could transform into a service that users would be expected to pay for monthly or annually. I'm not saying this is going to happen. And if Microsoft has any sense at all, this would be an optional thing, but I'm worried. Microsoft has a lot of incentive to do this. That incentive being they want people to use Microsoft services and nobody is. They want to build this Microsoft ecosystem up and I'm scared that they're going to force people into it. In the past few years, Windows 11 has never come close to matching the market share of Windows 10. Somehow even, it seems like Windows 11 is actually losing market share, and I don't even know how that happens. The operating system is that despised. Microsoft does not like this. This does not look good to them, not just because they want more people upgrading their computers or to the new OS, it's because Windows 11 is more than just a software update to them. It's a first look at what they probably want Windows to become, something that requires an always online connection with your Microsoft account. This would be a way to fight against those unauthorized pirated copies of their operating system. You don't have to worry about people not upgrading their OS if they have to update their OS. A lot of people don't seem to be embracing new Microsoft stuff like Copilot, and I imagine that's scaring the company senseless. How do we force people into using this stuff? So what's the solution here? Well, I suppose people could just stop updating their computers, just stay on Windows 10, but at some point there would be legitimate security risks for your hardware without proper precautions. And oh, look at that. Microsoft is trying to, trying to charge people a lot of money to get those safety updates. That's how convenient. Even still, obviously developers won't be supporting Windows 10 forever, you know, 10, 20 years from now. What if Microsoft actually did do all of this? If they made Windows a paid for subscription, always online cloud service, a lot of people would be looking outside of Microsoft for their next operating system. Uh, the penguin, the penguin's staring at me, isn't he? 
Linux is an open source operating system that is not owned by any singular corporation and as such would never have the problems that Windows is currently facing or could be facing in this theoretical dystopian future. A lot of people love Linux because of this, but at least right now, it isn't really a potential successor to Windows. For some people, Linux is great. It can do everything they need it to do. But for a lot of other people, <laughs> it can't. If you're a graphic designer, your coworkers probably won't appreciate you switching to Linux and emulating Photoshop when everybody else is on Windows and using the native version. You're breaking compatibility. For a lot of people who just use their computers for work, they're not going to switch just because they have a personal vendetta against the company making the operating system. Businesses, corporations right now already do have to pay a subscription fee to Microsoft to use their office or cloud services. So even if Microsoft did decide to turn Windows into a subscription service, sadly this probably wouldn't be a deal breaker for businesses that are already using the operating system. I mean, think about it, it would just be another subscription they have to pay. Now, maybe I'm giving them a bit too much credit, but personally, I don't believe that Microsoft is so stupid that they'd actually do this, that they would make Windows a cloud subscription, always online operating system. Sure, there's a lot of financial incentive to do so, but like government regulatory bodies already have a lot of issues with Microsoft. And coupled with that 70 plus percent market share of desktop operating systems, this is the exact kind of move that would lead to a company such as Microsoft getting broken up. But even still, it is concerning that anything like this could even happen. To me, Microsoft is just the best example of when big tech becomes too big. Windows is not an exceptional product. Microsoft's services are subpar. The company has become increasingly complacent over the past decade, because why wouldn't they be? It's clear that they will never have any legitimate competition in the personal computing market. They have no incentive to improve their products. And when they do, it's in a direction that consumers don't really see as an improvement. It's just ways for Microsoft to make more money. No matter what they do, developers will continue to target their applications for Windows. People will buy computers pre-installed with Windows and Microsoft will continue doing whatever it is they do. Ugh. I, sh I sure love technology. It's great. Again, huge thanks to Aura for sponsoring today's video. Stop leaving yourself vulnerable to data breaches and protect yourself in the digital age by going to aura.com slash knowledgehusk. Try your first two weeks for free. Link is below in the description.